Is that after the universities or prior to? It was. Uh, uh, he worked at the high schools, and then he got the opportunities for the, uh, the college level. He, I think his, his job at Temple was one of the ones that he had the, the most influence or put him in the limelight because a lot of times it's who you know mm -hmm. that gets you in that door. Mr. Brown got me in a many a door. I would have never been in this show at the University of Pennsylvania back in the 70s. They had an all-black show in 1973 of all the Chester, I mean all the Philadelphia black artists and it traveled from Philadelphia and wound up, it went across the country and wound up in Africa, Nigeria, mm. and came back. And I had a piece in that, and that felt good. And I would have never had that opportunity if it hadn't been for Sam Brown. Mm. And who was, was Sam Brown? Teacher. Pardon me? Who was Sam Brown? Sam Brown was a Philadelphia artist. He retired from 35 years of teaching at Dobbins in Philadelphia. Dobbins was one of the premier trade schools in Philadelphia. Mm -hmm. You went to Dobbins, you could have trade that you could feed yourself with. Mm -hmm. he, uh, he was the head of the art department. Uh, the art department had a sculpture department. They have a dance, music. His was the visual part, and it's so ironic. He had retired after 35 years. His wife was a teacher, too. Her name was Miriam. I was at an art show in Cherry Hill, New Jersey in 1970, and him and I were positioned side by side. I never saw him, had never met him. He had just retired. It was Saturday. We were the only two blacks in the show. And we connected just like that. Mm. He said his thing was he wanted to find a like-minded individual that he could pass on his artistic knowledge to. Isn't that incredible? It is. See it how is. God put us together. Mm -hmm. God put this together. Right. He went through telling me all about uh, his history. His family moved from Philadelphia, from Williamston, North Carolina. His father was a professional poster. Wow. He had clients, white, black, everybody. He was that good at what he did. So he was a somewhat man that was very middle class, and he had a middle class upbringing. He went to he went to Temple, Tyler. He went to a university. He got his master's degree from the University of Pennsylvania. Well, anyway, that Saturday we met. He went all over telling me about all the black artists. He told me about the Philadelphia Pyramid Club. <clears throat> the Pyramid Club came about because uh, the Philadelphia Sketch Club was all white and they didn't accept blacks or women. So the blacks formed the Pyramid Club and the only white guy that they had was a guy named Julian Block. But he drew only black people. All his siblings he did were black. Mm. He was a tired guy. And he connected with them. He was tight with them. He was down with them and everything. And Mr. Brown, okay. yeah, too much outside. he's outside. Tutors outside. Yeah, so.
Well, Mr. Brown. Ask a question about Mr. Benson, uh -huh. the house. Well, how I acquired it, it's, it was, it was quite ironic that I called about this property and a gentleman actually had it up for sale. Hmm. And he had it up for sale. He had a contract, I guess, with Miss Benson, Miss mm -hmm. Ruby. And I called him, and so I went through it or whatever. He said, yeah, you could just unscrew it and go inside. So I went inside, and as I was going through, the guy the guy never showed. He just called, he just answered, he called me on the phone, mm -hmm. responded to the phone and said, yeah, you could just go in. I said, okay, I'll call you when I, when I close it back up. Went through it, I seen what it was, yada, yada, yada. Then I called him and said, yeah, I'd like to make an offer on it. So I made the offer on it. He was like, okay, we're going to get together. And then something told me to look it up. So I, I went and I looked up on the county's website on who's the owner of it. So as I looked it up, I seen that they had moved, the Bensons had moved. Because I didn't know that this was actual Sam Benson's home. I was just saying that Miss Ruby Benson or whatever the case may be was transferred into her name. And so I proceeded on, the guy stopped answering his phone hmm. that I was trying to purchase the property for. Mm -hmm. So I'm like, okay. And the next thing you know, I seen it back up for sale. And I'm like, like he has someone that wants to buy, I want to purchase this property. Mm -hmm. So then this is another gentleman now that's that actually, they call them wholesalers. So what wholesalers do, they, they, sometimes they just get a contract on a property. And like, a, so he had a contract with Miss Ruby and then he was just gonna try to sell it mm -hmm. to someone else. So he never really had the money or he never anticipated on purchasing a property. He just wanted to flip the property. Wow. So, mm -hmm. and that's, that's normal. That's mm -hmm. normal in the business now, mm -hmm. call them bird dogs. Mm -hmm. And so now this is someone else. Someone else now has come up and now they have the property. I'm like, I know the property already. I want to make an offer. This is my offer. Mm -hmm. I don't even remember what it was, mm -hmm. but. Uh, Did you have to offer like a large amount, like 10 or 15? Or yeah, 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 it was, it was, yeah, uh -huh. it definitely was more than that. Like properties, mm -hmm. this sure. point. Um, but here it was once again, uh, they didn't follow through. So now I'm like, I'm a little leery because I was going to bring him a deposit. Okay. This guy, I was going to bring him a deposit because he showed me, he sent me over a contract. Mm -hmm. You know? So now I want to bring him a deposit, but we never linked up. Hmm. So what made me go, I went and knocked on the door. Miss Ruby door. I knew where mm -hmm. she lived because mm -hmm. I seen her on there. I was like, hi. And I asked her, she was like, yes. So she was kind of like leery, like, who yeah. are you? And I told Actually, her that I'm the gentleman yeah. that I seen the property and I wanted to purchase the property and I was waiting for a guy to get back to me and she was just like, nah, I don't want to sell my property. She's like, no, uh, I'm done with that property. Like basically, she had it sold already to someone else. I'm like, I was meeting a gentleman that you actually, uh, I said, well, here, take my phone number. If anything should come up, I'll be interested in purchasing it. So she calls it a week or two. Who calls me? Miss Ruby calls me. She was like, hi, are you still interested in the property? And I was like, yes. She was like, uh, no. When that happened prior to that, she says, it's not for sale. I was like, no, it is. It, it actually is on. So the next time I seen it up, it might be like two weeks later. Mm -hmm. and she Like basically we were done and I was just like, okay, no problem. Give me a call if anything ever changed. Mm -hmm. So I go online and one day I see you online for sale. So I screenshots it and I sends it to Ms. Ruby. Mm -hmm. And she says, where did you get that from? And then I showed her mm -hmm. where I got it from. And then she turned around and says, uh, she's like, I'll get back to you. Are you still interested? I said, yes, I'm still interested in, in, in purchasing a property. She's like, I'll get back in contact with you, but I, I may consider it. I said, okay. Mm -hmm. She might have called me a week later. She was like, how serious are you? I said, as serious as I can draw up a contract and I can do to you and I'll give you a deposit on it right then and there. Mm -hmm. And we'll, we can close in less than a week. Get out of here. So 
She says, you okay. have your ability to do that? Yes. So, wow. I, I actually do the deeds and stuff like that. So I, I like do the whole gambit. So I did the entire closing in less than a week. And which was quite impressive to her because she had been waiting for so I'm long. I'm sure. And I'm was, shocked. It was a cash transaction. She was done. She was really like, like, you know, like that's why we had a good report. Everything that I said, I mm -hmm. I came yeah. step by step. Yeah. Like, and I told her step by step. And her and her daughter met us, uh, met me, and there you have it. It was all done. She was just mm -hmm. like, she was thankful and happy. And we were happy. But prior to that, my wife seen it and was just like, nah, it's a, you know, it's a piece of shit. Like the house is trash. Mm -hmm. But what I seen was something totally different. But mind you, I didn't know. What was in there? I'm just looking at when you the went to, You didn't see all of this. No, it, when you see the property, it's like shambles. Like it's shambles. It's like wow. This was just like the treasure. That's it that's was why trash. These, it's trash. It's trash still to this day. Wow. These were treasures that was hidden inside of it. Like these mm -hmm. were the lost treasures. When I say the lost treasures, these are mm -hmm. definitely the lost treasures of Samuel Benson. Mm, mm, mm. That was God. perceived as junk and trash. As we went through, that's when I actually uh, contacted. When I now after I purchased mm. the property, my wife still didn't know. I I finally gets to go in it. I'm taking my my contractors in with me. I said, yeah, unscrew the door as we going through. And I seen a couple pictures. And I seen more pictures. I seen them stacked up. I said, hold up. And I called. K Hunt, the art monster. Up. I said, hey, bro, come down. Because I'm thinking at this point still, I'm thinking about just getting this house gutted out. But guess what? It's some, it's some things there that he may need or he can use in his art ventures. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So mm -hmm. as we actually went through it, and he says, oh, my God. He says that, do you understand this will be this is the best, this will be the best find or best property that you will ever come across mm -hmm. with the stuff inside. Do you know this would be, this is the biggest find that you probably ever made in your life? And I was just like, huh, what? And he just went on and on. He says, please don't tell no one else about this property. Seal this property up. Definitely don't tell nobody, don't tell nobody else. So that right there, that led us to that point where, you know, just to look into it a little bit more. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So, yeah. but because it was so damaging, like crack pipes, stuff like that mm -hmm. all over, mm -hmm. it's a, it was a shithole. So I was mm -hmm. afraid to tell my wife, like, yo, I mm -hmm. wouldn't purchase this property. So. <laughs>